What is going on everybody? It's me Earl here and today I have my monthly update of my W204 Mercedes-Benz C350. So there are a few things that went wrong with this car over the past three months, almost four months actually. I actually have not made um, anything the first week of June. So I guess you could say this is uh, two months later because it is almost July. As you can see this car is quite dirty. Unfortunately uh, it did rain and you know all that but it does have a good sealant wax which really um, you know helped it repel um, a lot of the waters but as you can see it's still nasty so I need to give it a quick wash uh, after this but I just wanted to show you guys that I do daily drive this thing as you can see there's a lot of bug squats and everything like that so this car has definitely seen better days when it comes to being cleaned all right let's start off with the interior so there are a few things that went wrong with this car obviously the seat this seat is just falling apart i'd say this is probably a 120 dollar um cover here it's just a cover that's falling apart this is mb tech so this is not real leather because this is not real leather it's not very slippery it feels good it's very comfortable but this is a sore thumb right here you know i'm not sure if you can see it closely but it's getting worse over time uh I, probably because i have a, some kind of sharp ass or something like that this is the inside so far we are at 90,996 miles that is still pretty low for a w204 in this era but that is getting up there uh, i bought this at 80,000 miles so that's about 10,000 miles in the past four months everything still works uh gear shifter the comfort sport mode uh heated seat works even the glove box as you can see i have a lot of water bottles because this is a chiller so and it is summer and let's talk about that since it's summer that means it's hot and you know what happens when it's hot with old electronics that means they go wrong <laughs> especially plastics so actually it was just last week or two weeks ago uh, after my 600 mile road trip the sensor for the auto headlights uh, occasionally it will turn on and it says it's inoperative and that just means that the sensor is going bad and the sensor costs about 70 bucks on ebay but you do need to calibrate it i believe to code it for the car itself which can be a problem but it's not a big deal for me personally but i am planning to fix it in the future if it pops up again once in a while it does tell me that it's not working but sometimes it works so i'm not really sure what's going on i just i still put it at auto anyway because you know just in case uh let's go ahead and talk about the other problem the other problem i have with this car is the switches are pretty much falling apart uh, they are made out of plastic or i believe some kind of coating so this is technically plastic as you can see the white one right there but the black coating of the the plastic is pretty much peeling off and this happened because i was using a air compressor to basically get all get rid of any dust or anything like that inside it and it just it just fell apart like flakes so <laughs> and as you can see this one's actually fading off too but it does work um everything like the window switches work uh i just you know it's just it's just an eyesore honestly and a lot of these problems on the inside are just pretty much eyesore everything works the uh the infotainment works uh, well i mean that's not really infotainment that's pretty much basic but it does work i could call my mom or something like that on the fly with this and it's very convenient and actually i'm quite glad that i got the basic version because if i had the complicated navigation package which would flip up flip down whatever uh, i believe that would be uh, quite a bit of an issue in the future you know when it gets stuck or anything like that and you can't really do anything that's why i kind of do admire having the basic version of the infotainment <laughs> one thing's for sure there's no sagging headliner like the audi <laughs> you know what i still get ptsd from the audi man like it's crazy um, I got my sunroof over there. This is actually my best friend for the past few weeks now over the summer. It's so humid and hot here in Maryland that it's unbearable almost. It's actually worse than last year. All right, let's go ahead and talk about what else went wrong with this car. So the other thing that went wrong with this car is this headrest right here. As you can see, I'm not sure if you can see it, but I have super glued it so it's a diy fix <laughs> i know i know I, I should probably just buy a new headrest but you know what i'm not gonna spend 125 dollars for a headrest and 
at the end of the day it's just an eyesore it's not really it doesn't really impact the usability of it but this is pretty much rock solid here with the gorilla glue it works wonders man gorilla glue 10 out of 10 and look at that it looks like it's pretty much fresh out of factory i guess you could say uh, you can see some residue of the super glue here but I did my best and that's pretty much one of the things that really bugged me off. It was already wonky when I first got this car and it just finally gave up after the 600 mile road trip that I had with this. There's nothing to talk about in the back seat. Uh, it is a back seat. It's actually relatively clean here until I just stepped on it. Well, that's always great. Another thing that went wrong with this car is as I was on my way back from my 700 mile or 600 mile road trip from Virginia back to Maryland. I actually had a nail on one of the tires and that's this is the exact tire that had I had a nail on. That was a pain in the ass. Um, I was losing air on the way back and good thing though is that the TPM mass sensor on this car still works even after a decade, <laughs> which is surprising. But you know, I thought it was broken because the auto headlights was, was wonky and I thought it was just broken, but no, it wasn't. Tell me right that this exact tire was flat and it was. I didn't have a choice, but I had to fix a flat because I always bring a fix a flat no matter what, because I don't like driving with donut tires. So I got a fix a flat and that seemed to fix everything on this tire. It seemed to seal it off. However, it is unfortunate that this tire will have to be replaced soon if I ever get another nail on this tire. So I did some maintenance on this car. I recently did an oil change as well as a transmission fluid change because it is recommended at 90,000 miles. So I did it at, I believe, 88 or 89,000 miles. So just about a week or uh, two weeks ago. But I did oil change and transmission fluid change. And that transmission fluid change really helped uh, smoothen the gears, you know, especially the first and second gear, which was quite rough before I did a fluid change and a transmission. Now it's just, it's silky smooth, which is really, really nice. Uh, I will be doing spark plugs, the intake, and then the, um, the coil pack soon at 92,000 miles but I think I'll wait until 95 since most of my driving is on the highway I don't really drive as hard as I used to do with the Audi and actually I really do not drive fast at all um, like I said this car doesn't really make me feel like I want to drive fast although it is a lot faster than the B7 Audi that I had so I think that's pretty much so far that's going on with this car with a four month period that I owned this car. Most of the problems are basically the inside uh, comfort creatures. Uh, <laughs> number one eyesore was definitely the window switches. However, you could easily replace it by just pulling this apart and then just, you know, taking the whole thing off. But I, will, I won't do that for a while until it gets really bad on all the switches. So, I mean, it is a daily driver. It will get faded again and flake off or whatever. So I really don't see the point of replacing it for now. Maybe when I get my next car and I don't drive this as much because I am planning to get a new car soon and this car is absolutely perfect. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't really need, this is a perfect daily and this is exactly why I love this car so far. All right, so I'm gonna make this video quite short. Uh, let's go ahead and take this car for a little bit of a joy ride. I'm not gonna, I don't drive hard. I like to uh, keep things relatively nice and dandy. That's a nice Mustang right there. That's a Shelby? Wow. Yeah, this is a film set actually. This is pretty cool. Look at that, Aries. Wow, those are some big, big light setups, man. If you guys didn't know, I do videography, uh, freelance videography for companies. So that's exactly why I drive a lot. And wow, look at this production team. Comfort mode, first gear. Transmission, traction control off. Let's see how this goes. This place is such a blind spot, man. Like,